received the question if there are requirements to reincarnation. Do you need a specific knowledge or a specific skill to be able to reincarnate? Well, the question is, how do you want to incarnate? It's in a way yes and no. Um, at the moment that you are in a way free within the cosmos, uh, you are moved by currents of energy. Um, you are in a certain place and that place always has an energy and that energy is moving and as long as you are in that place or connected to the energy around you you will move along with that energy. You can navigate by interacting with those energies, you can also um, take on ballast, you can take on lower energies to bring yourself down, you can also let go of lower energies and try to stimulate the higher energies and then you move up and just like in a balloon by moving into different layers you will also move in different directions because different layers of energy are moving in different directions but then you're still not really moving yourself but you're in at least able to navigate to move yourself from one flow of energy into a different flow of energy and in the same way you can that way like incarnate within a certain uh, race or species or culture and because they're all in a way also currents of energy moving on their own path and often as an incarnated being we're actually part of several of these currents but what currents we are most susceptible to are we determined by our race by our culture uh, by our religion by our friends uh, determines on how we move our own consciousness. Um, the other thing is of course um, by in a way transforming our energy into a very specific energy we get we have an attraction to that similar energy and then we're actively guiding ourselves towards one very specific goal. And these abilities of in a way generating energy, uh, letting go of energy, absorbing other energies, um, they can help us with our incarnation. So if I die without any knowledge or skill, um, it is very likely that whatever current I'm most identified with, like if I'm identified very much with my race, I will be born as a member of that same race. If I'm very identified with culture, I will be born within the same culture. If I'm identified with religion, I will be born again in that same religion. So there is a continuity which happens naturally. And um, if we want to, in a way, have a change, then we have to really do that actively. So naturally we repeat and Change requires skill, requires awareness. So the ability to remove energy, the ability to absorb energy and the ability to transform energy will allow us to maneuver within yeah, uh, our incarnation but also between incarnations. And what we find is that ultimately we are um, attracted to forms which have a, a similarity. Often in your life you will mind, find things which you feel strongly about, uh, which are a large part of your energy body. So if you love something or you hate something, you're very likely to encounter it. If you don't care about something, it doesn't have to happen. You're not attracting it as strongly. And it's important to note that both love and hate are equally likely to produce encounters. It is about the amount of energy, how strong the magnet is, how strong these events will be uh, pulled upon your path. Um, and ultimately, both love and hate will on only stop controlling you once you develop equanimity, where you are able to be free of your reaction to whatever it is you loved or hated, where you can just be yourself and the other thing can be itself 
and you can be free how to interact with it. You can choose to love it, you can choose to hate it without being pre-programmed into a certain response by your past lives or by cultural or religious or racial preferences. So to be able to free to move you have to liberate yourself from programmings and you have to be able to in a way create uh, the programs which you would like to manifest. Because if there are no likes or dislikes, then there is no attraction to form and you will stop incarnating. Because if you want nothing from life, if nothing in the world is of any appeal to you, if you hate or love nothing within the world, then you are not going to be pulled into the world. You are going to stay on the spirit level without taking incarnation. But it's actually quite tricky not to, uh, yeah, to separate yourself from the flow you're in and also not to have love or hate uh, towards anything. And this is, you could say, the art of becoming enlightened, of really separating yourself and becoming a free spirit. And a free spirit can choose to yeah, go into incarnation by creating a like or a dislike or a purpose. So, controlling incarnation is um, not an easy thing, but it is something which will happen naturally to you. We're also not completely free here. Um, there's a limited amount of, you could say, options available. There's a limited amount of uh, beings being incarnated. And you could say there is a kind of a waiting list. There are more spirits than there are yeah, physical beings in existence. And roughly you could say it's, it's easily a, a 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 30 to 1 um, odds. So not all beings immediately get the opportunity to incarnate again. And also there is a limited amount of beings available. So you cannot incarnate as a dragon or a giant or a unicorn very easily because those forms are not available. You will have to make do with what forms are available. You also have to accept the local laws and restrictions to incarnate in a specific place, which in our case means we have to deal with karma because in our solar system karma exists. And this karmatic system is basically uh, a dual system. Uh, one of it is an award system. If you are able to deal with a certain power in a good way, you can control it. You don't get controlled by it too much. Um, and you're manifesting this power. Other people can also learn from you. Um, well, then you can have this power available as an option to you once more. Um, but if you show that you are in a way ignoring certain parts of your being, certain parts of your, uh, of your power, then why be burdened with all those extra complexities? Um, let's not give them to you. Because then you can focus without being distracted. So, for instance, if you're only interested in looking for food, this is the only thing you want out of life, food is really your cosmos, then why be a human with all these social interactions and all these complexities and having to work? You can just become an animal and hunt for food all your life. And that form will be more suited to you. Um, so karma is in a way giving you uh, a choice of incarnations, a choice of forms, which are considered to be suited to you. And there are uh, deities which are in a way um, um, applying this, uh, this law. And of course it is possible to try to circumvent the law and to, to cheat the authorities, but let's not go into that. Um, because often that works for several incarnations, but 
ultimately you might end up in a situation or in an incarnation where you lose that ability and then well you'll have a debt with interest to uh, to pay back so it's only a short-term solution trying to cheat karma um, having a good relationship though with the powers which determine the next incarnation uh, can be also really helpful in uh, in getting where you want to go if you understand um, how your actions will change your karma then you can actively live in such a way, act in such a way, to give yourself certain possibilities in your next incarnation. You can, in a way, invest uh, during your life into having a better incarnation in your next life. And yeah, talking to uh, the powers which uh, mediate that and having understanding of the laws of karma can be very beneficial. Another way to uh, to move into a different uh, incarnation form is by servitude. Um, if you work with a higher power, for instance a deity or an egregore, um, then you're in a way also placed a little bit outside of the system um, because those higher powers have their own purpose, have their own mission and you are in a way an instrument to them so you will be treated as an instrument to the higher power rather than being judged on your specific actions and your likes and dislikes um, so it can be that for instance I um, have a certain capacity which I don't really use in this life so I would not deserve to have a similar capacity in my next life but if as a servant of for instance uh, Sophia the Holy Wisdom I such a capacity is required for me to be a good priest or priestess to her a good servant to her then this will be granted to me as in a way as the you could say almost the karma of the of the deity will apply to you rather than your own individual karma which will apply to you. This is very much the power also of devotion and of surrender, giving yourself to a higher power, uh, placing yourself under the guidance of that deity so that that deity can determine your karma to an extent. There is in a way a mix between your personal karma and the karmatic help you get from your spiritual master or from the deity which is on a higher level which can also intermediate for you but working on karma is really um, a long-term project uh, you generally have to devote at least four incarnations to your karmatic purpose before the karma will alter enough will change enough so you won't really move into a new karmatic pattern a new karmatic flow of incarnations but if you're willing to invest then th you can really start building up your your incarnations into higher and higher forms and forms which have greater and greater liberty and freedom and ability to uh, have a wide range of responses to things which are happening to you you're no longer limited to uh, what your culture thinks what your parents think, what the media thinks, or even your own instincts of likes and dislikes. Um, your spirit will become more and more capable of yeah, using different aspects of your being and moving them forward. And this greater liberation and ability to deal with all these lower energies is the reward, you could say, for making long-term investments into uh, which are done by disciplining yourself, by really choosing what behavioral patterns you will continue in your life and which you will stop in your life. And once you start showing this self-control, you can be entrusted with more and more control over yourself and ultimately by having more control over yourself, also over other people around you, over your environment. So I really 
believe that um, self-discipline is really the start of your journey towards controlling your own inclinations.